Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. Uh, this is the uh, display case that we're going to use for our um, Belly Tiger diorama. So, let's get on with it. <laughs> so yes, this is the case we're going to use. As you can see, it is enormous. Uh, let me just get it out of the box and I'll show you what it looks like. Hang on. Right. There's the base. Oh. Oh, here's the top. Let's get rid of this. Oh. There we go. And that goes on there like that. So there we are. Um, do excuse the overhead light, you know. Um, so yes, this is what we're going to be using. Uh, I'm going to take this top off for a minute and put it to one side because I don't want to get it damaged. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a lot of space to work with, but at the same time, not as much as you'd think. Um, let me show you, hang on. Right, so I've put the, the tanks on here roughly where I think they're going to go. And as you can see, there's actually not a lot of space, all things considered. Um, just got to figure out exactly how to, how to do this, because this is the most important bit, first of all, is getting everything lined up. But I think we're going to do, go for something like this. So, yeah. Um, so again, this represents the scene from the film where our protagonist is hiding behind another wrecked T-34, which the white tiger is then just pummeling, basically. Um, yeah, so that's how we're roughly going to start. Now, I've got to figure out the best way to do this. To be fair, dioramas are not my speciality. Um, but uh, that's to give you a rough idea of the layout. Um, now, I've also made, hang on, let me put these tanks to one side for a minute so they don't get broken. Right, because uh, I've also made ah, this. Uh, so this is to go underneath it um, to allow us to have a battery and everything to power the lights for the, uh, the blown up tank. So I printed this in four pieces, as you can see, and then glued them together rather haphazardly. Uh, now the idea is this should go underneath this. I did test fit it before, but I haven't test fit it since I glued it together. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, that sits underneath it, uh, and it will have a switch on the back and everything so we can turn the lights on. Um, so, but it also keeps it fairly low because I didn't want to make the, the base too thick because it doesn't need to be. Uh, but we'll get to that later. So again, I'm going to put this to one side just to avoid getting anything on it. And we need to figure out what we're going to do with this. Now, I've got some ideas. Let me uh, assemble some supplies and we'll make a start. Right, so the first thing I've done is I've just taped up the edges here. Um, just to avoid getting anything into the groove where the uh, where the, the lid goes on. Um, and I think what I'm going to do to start is I've got this. Uh, now these are, this is a polystyrene sheet. Um, I don't want to show you the box because it has an address on it. But these came from um, a school, the school where my missus used to work. Um, they were just getting rid of them, a couple of boxes of them. And so she basically rescued them from the bin. Uh, now these are major brushes safe print sheets. Um, expanded polystyrene sheets, ideal for printing. Uh, and they're 300 by 300 by 3 millimeters. Uh, and they come from Major Brushes Limited. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but the idea is you can use these to make, um, you cut shapes out of them and use them for like printing, you know, like with poster paints and whatnot. But that is pretty much the right size for this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these to make uh, a bit of contour on the terrain. Uh, so let's just see, because I think if I get that roughly in the middle, 
then what I can do is um, like use one of these as a base and then build up a couple of little layers to give us a bit of height. I mean, in the film, the terrain is quite flat, but I just want to give it a bit of interest, you know. Um, so let's just measure this quickly. Uh, now, let's just turn this around. Get that roughly in the middle. And then we'll mark this down here, about there. Now if we measure that, that is 10 and an eighth. Oh, just put that to one side for a second. So if we measure 10 and an eighth on this side, So we find that this ruler is not long enough. Oh no, it's all right. We get we'll just just about get away with it. Right. So we'll cut that off. Now let's get this back in. Oh, there we go, you see? And that gives us a nice little base to start with. Yeah, I like that. Um, so, let me get the tanks back. I've got the camera on, a, on an arm right in front of me. <laughs> it's really awkward. Uh, hang on a second. Let me just get these tanks back in. You may have noticed I'm filming on a different bench. And you know what? For the amount of times I've filmed on this bench, I have still yet to figure out the best way to place the cameras. So, uh, but I th think something like that will probably do us. So, because what I want to do is I want to have almost like a road junction if you like. And it's, again, I'm, it's a bit of artistic license because this is not how it is in the film, but because uh, in the film they're just in the woods. But like a, like a track junction, if you like. So we'll just do something like that because what I want to do is use a couple of layers of this to kind of build up the thickness just a little bit not too much um, but just to give it just to you know create a bit of variation so it's not just flat something like that right let's get these tanks out of the way again uh, there's going to be a lot of putting on and taking off of tanks because I really don't want them getting damaged especially this one like I said because that's going to be a nightmare um, okay so let's get another one of these sheets they're really awkward to get these out of the boxes I've never used this stuff before. I don't, I don't know well it's going to work. It might be awful. You might it might be one of these things where it won't um, <laughs> where it won't glue up. So I was just thinking actually, what I could do if I put that on there. Let's get this out of the way again. Most of this video, I suspect, is going to be me putting things in and out of shot. So I apologise for that. Uh, so ten and an eighth, wasn't it? So if we go 10 and an eighth, there, and we go 10 and an eighth there. Because I was just thinking, now I've marked that one, if I cut this one, then, um,
I can cut that one out and stick it onto here. Okay. So that's that. That should be roughly the same size, yep. Okay, so now if I cut these bits out, just roughly. out of that so now that bit goes up there that bit goes uh, like that and then we have a bit there and we have a bit oh this bit is this bit here I don't know why this bit is really staticky if that makes sense. Like that, you see. And that gives us our basic road junction. That looks right, doesn't it? Uh, so, I think what I need to do now, before I get too carried away, is start sticking some of these bits together. Let me get some um, glue, and we can start sticking this together. Hang on a minute. Right, a bit of a Mod Podge mat, and we'll see how this works. Right, now, let's just move that there for a second, get this back in. Because what we want to do first, oh, good grief. Where did the other bit go? There it is. What I'm going to do first is stick this onto here. Uh, yes, so. There was an interesting um, thing with this when it comes to gluing down polystyrene uh, that I learnt from. Uh, is it the Train Tutor? I can't remember now. It's been a long time since I've watched it. Uh, but he basically said, and it does make sense, don't cover the whole thing because what happens is it forms a skin when it dries and the stuff in the middle won't dry. So if you actually put dots on like this, it lets the air get into it, which actually makes a lot of sense to me. So, right, let's turn that over, put that down on there, like that try and get it roughly in the middle somewhere right now this bit goes down here But yeah, basically you want to leave like air gaps in between the, the blobs of glue so that it doesn't, um, otherwise the stuff in the middle doesn't dry. Right, you go on there like that. Now this little one goes down here. Oh, good. You see this, watch. It's just static. It's 
quite annoying actually. Hopefully once I get the glue on it, it will stay put. Right, now I think what we need to do, get that back in the middle, and then we need to put some weight on this and let it set up for a little while. So we'll let this dry for a bit and then we'll come back. Right, so this has had some time to dry and uh, what I'm doing now, I'm just using this sanding sponge and I'm just going over the edges, um, just lightly, just to knock that sharp corner off, just to kind of round the edges over a little bit. It doesn't, not, it doesn't have to be a huge amount, just to, uh, but it's just to like knock that sharp corner off. And so it doesn't need a lot, because obviously this is very soft polystyrene and, you know, it doesn't take a lot. So this is very, I don't know if you can see that flex in the middle. That's not the polystyrene, that's the plastic underneath flexing. Because <laughs> this is something I've never done before. Um, and we're going to give it a go. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at making sculpt mould. Now, if you don't know, sculpt mould is a stuff that's very popular for terrain making uh, and it's basically a mixture of plaster of Paris and powdered paper so um, it's quite expensive it used to be really like dirt cheap now for some reason it's really expensive I don't know why but it is um, and I thought about using something like that on this because normally I use filler and I thought this is quite a big area to go over with filler so I thought I'd try something different but there are various ways and means of making your own. Uh, now, um, the one, the technique I'm going to try, and like I say, I've never done this before, so it might go horribly wrong. I was watching a channel the other day. Uh, I think it was, what was the name of it? Um, Terrain Made Easy? Might have been. I'll put a link to it anyway. Um and the guy on there was talking about how, how he makes this stuff. And he had a, a, a different take on it. And I quite liked what he was doing. So I thought I'd give it a go. But the main thing is it's mixing uh, plaster of Paris with paper. Specifically, toilet paper. So I have this. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, Aldi's um, own brand, I think. Uh, luxury two-ply toilet tissue. Not sure I could describe two-ply as luxury, but still. Um, it will do for our purposes because what it was, was cheap. Um, I think it was about £1.50 or something for these four rolls, which is more than enough for our purposes. Uh, so, let's put that down there. I also have this. This is a... You can buy these trays um, in the works uh and they do like there's three of them i can't remember how much they cost but you get a pack of three and they're a couple of quid um they're only flimsy little things but they're they're sold as craft trays um but i use them primarily on the the resin printer so when i take stuff off the printer and i want to clean it i have this to kind of contain everything so i get mainly for that but they're also obviously handy for things like this because they contain spillages uh, so what we need now is things. Uh, we need some plaster of Paris for a start, which is over here. Ah. Oh, I bought this bag a while ago from the works. Not the works, uh, Hobbycraft. Um, and uh, this was bought for my daughter to do her rock moulds. Um, which, where did I put that video? I think that video went on Patreon, I can't remember. Um, anyway, uh, so I need something to mix this in. This is um, Chinese container, Chinese food. Although, interestingly, it says made in the UK on it, which is nice. Oh, and they're recyclable, I didn't realise that. Anyway, that's beside the point. So, um, here's the thing. The reason I like what this chap did on this other channel was because most people 
what they do when they make this is they tell you to soak this uh, first, turn it basically to pulp, blend it to shred it. So you basically, like I say, you've got like pulp. Then you have to dry it. So you have to put it in the oven for hours and hours and hours to dry it. And so then someone came up with the idea of, well, why bother doing that? Just tear your toilet paper into pieces, put mix it with the powder and add water and there you go. So that's fine. But what this guy, other guy did, which I quite like the idea of, because uh, he said it tends to come out quite soggy. And so what he does, or his suggestion, was to mix the plaster of Paris first and then put the paper in. And then that way your water isn't all sucked up by the toilet paper while you're trying to mix it. So that's what we're going to do. So I have here some measuring spoons. The missus bought these ages ago um, for cooking. And quite frankly, for that purpose, they're useless. Because um, they're not, I don't know if you can see that, they're not flat on the top. So it's like this one is supposed to be a quarter cup uh, for the uh, colonials out there, the Americans. Yeah, you'll, you'll get this. This end is fine. With, with the like, This is a quarter teaspoon or 1.25 mil. That's, the, this is fine. This has a big drop off on the end. And then a, like a, to, so it's easy to scoop with. But it's like how do you m measure it? Anyway, she decided not to bother with it. She went and got a better set and I inherited these. So we'll use them for this. So let's get some plaster. I'm really not sure how much we're going to need here, but we'll go for about that much to start with. Um, we'll, do, we'll just do a little bit to begin with, because honestly, I don't know how this is going to work. So, And then we need to dismember some of our toilet roll. So... And basically the idea is, with this, is you just tear it up. Into, you know, shreds, pieces, chunks, whatever you want to call it. Um, it doesn't have to be tiny pieces. You know, that's probably good enough. Maybe we go a little bit smaller. Um, So yeah, just like that. I'll put those over here for a second. Now I have a little squeezy bottle here with water in it. Uh, I bought these a long time ago. I bought three of them, and I can't for the life of me remember what I bought them for. <laughs> uh, I need a stirrer. Oh, I haven't got anything to stir it with. Um, hang on, let me get something to stir it with. Right. I've got myself some coffee stirrers and also I've put some gloves on just in case. So let's mix this up first. This is not the ideal shape to be doing this. I've been better using a cup or something. I think we want this probably a bit runnier than that. See, that's the way it goes. Yeah, I definitely want it a bit runnier than that. Right, give that a little mix. Is that the name? Anyway. Um, oh, don't do that. <laughs> oh, I just flicked it all over myself. I'm over modeling everywhere. Never mind. That's why we put the paper down. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get some of this paper in here. Right. Let's get that mixed in. We might need to put a bit more water in it, I'm not sure. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I don't know how this is going to come out. Yeah, put a bit more water in there.
the, the trouble is, it's like you mix up what you think is going to be loads of this stuff, and then it just, just as you add more things, it gets the volume gets smaller and smaller, <laughs> which is the weird thing about it. Right, okay, that's getting somewhere. Because you see, the paper is just basically breaking up in in the uh, the mix, so you don't need to do it first. So that's I think that's basically the argument behind it. Um, okay, let's put some of this on and see what happens. So. Work it in a bit with the uh, our stirrer come the applicator. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Isn't it? That's working a treat. I like that. Yeah, like I said, I'll put a link to the guy's video um, in the in the description, and you can. Go and have a look for yourself. But uh, let me let me cover this, and then we'll come back and want to see what it looks like. Because I think this is going to take a while. Um, but yeah, I'll get this covered, and then we'll go on from there. Right, this has actually gone way quicker than I thought it was going. To. <laughs> but that's that's good. Um, this has actually started to go off already. Um, literally, it's been a couple of minutes as I've been applying it. Uh, I mean this this here this is what I've got left and that is almost it's still pliable but that is that's going off so what I need to do quickly is smooth this off a bit uh, so let me get me water this is another reason for putting this in this um, because I can just hopefully squeeze a little bit on there and just you just kind of wet it down the surface and then you can just kind of smooth it out but you need to do it before it gets too it goes off too much i mean i don't it doesn't matter if it's not perfect but i'd like it i just want to get some rid of some of the worst of the lumps and bumps so but yeah that looks i'm really happy with how easy this was actually this has taken minutes i mean if i'd have done this with filler it'd take me forever um but yeah, this is because um, the other thing I'm doing as well is I, I smeared some onto the onto the surface here, and I'm just gonna kind of work it in just to like roughen up the surface a little bit. Uh, we'll add some extra, you know, obviously things onto this, but it's more just to give us a base. This has almost gone off. <laughs> it's literally been a few minutes and it's almost gone off. Well, that's okay. That's actually working to our advantage. So if you actually wet it down, it, it stops it going off quite so quick. Right. I think that will do for that. So what we're going to do now is leave this to set up. I'll clean up some of these edges a little bit, but basically leave this to set up. And then um, we can start putting some paint and finishes and things on it. But yeah, that's worked really well. Very happy with that. Right, uh, so I've done a few little bits off camera. Uh, I sprayed the whole thing with grey primer. Uh, then I hit the edges with black. Uh, and then I've remasked 
the the base here so that the masking now goes right up to uh, the side of the polystyrene. So that was all fairly basic stuff. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a uh, a covering, like a first color coat slash base coat to go over this. So what I've got here is nasty old brush. Uh, it's actually not an old brush, it's um, but it's it's a cheap brush. Let's put it that way. Uh, a little pot that used to have some dessert or something or other in it, and a variety of stuff. So what we're going to use for our base is this um, modeling paste. This is PBO. This is from um, Hobbycraft. So we're going to put a dollop of this in. Oh, if I can get the lid open. Ah. Actually, I might give that a shake first. Oh. Right. I'll put a big dob of that in. Uh, do we want any more than that? Better too much than not enough, right? So that's the first thing. Uh, then we're going to put in some paint uh, to colour it. This is, uh, again, PBO from Hobbycraft. This is yellow ochre. So this is the same colour as the oil paint we used for the washes on the tanks. Now, obviously, this will get diluted because we are putting it into... Um, you know a white base but it's you know just to give us a start so that's that now we're going to put some of this in this is filler powder and this is just to give it a little bit of texture um, so this is going to go absolutely everywhere uh, oh if I can even get the how are we, how are we going to do this oh I've got a little plastic spoon here so I'll put some in with that about that much I should imagine um, we'll worry about this <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just put that over there out of the way for now um, now I'm gonna give this a mix up first I'm gonna mix it with this plastic palette knife because I don't think those um, I don't think those coffee stirrers will be man enough. Oh, I can hear that airplane going over. Do you know what I don't understand? Maybe somebody can answer me this, anybody who works in the aviation business. Why do light aircraft not have silencers on the exhaust? Why do they run open headers? I mean, seriously, why? It just, they're obnoxious. You get these tiny little airplanes flying over and it sounds like, well, I don't know what. But they're just ridiculous. Ridiculously loud. Actually, that colour's come out pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. That's come out a lot better than I thought it was going to. The nice thing about using a clear pot like this to stir it in is you can see where you've missed, where it's still stuck to the sides. Look, there goes another one. Can you hear it? It's like, why are they so loud? I don't get it. Why do they not put silencers on them? Anyway, whatever. Doesn't matter. So if that's the worst thing I have to worry about today, I'm doing all right, you know. Now, I am tempted. I am tempted, I, he says, to, um, to put some sand in this. But I don't know if I'm going to put the sand in now or put it in after. Uh, let's see what this goes on like. And then um, we'll worry about that afterwards. We'll probably need a couple of coats. I say this is mainly for sort of texture more than anything. We'll put a quick coat on just to get some cover on it and then um, 
We'll go back and put some more on afterwards. So I just went through a whole thing with putting sand on here and then remembered I hadn't actually switched the camera on. So, <laughs> so basically what I've done, just to, good grief, I can't believe I did that. Uh, I've got another little pot here and I've got some beach sand. And uh, what I've been doing is just taking the sand and putting it through this sieve just to sift out, um, you know, the, the smaller particles and, um, and get rid of the bigger bits. And then just going round the edges of our, uh, you know, verges, if you like, um, and covering them with the sand. Uh, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a very light sprinkling on, on the road as well but not too much, but what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see how well you can see this, but I'm basically going up like the middle of the road because I want it to look like that there's, you know, wheel traffic, if you like. Uh, so I'm just putting a little bit, just to make it, the texture a little bit rougher in the middle of the road, or roads are, than where it is in the rest, but only a little, not, not a huge amount, just like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this dry then knock off any excess, then give it another coat of the yellow ochre, uh, then dry that, and then we can start looking at basically toning this down a bit because it is looking a bit like the yellow brick road at the moment. But, um, you know, that's fine. Because they, they say this is the same colour we put on the tank, so that's why it's a bit leery. Uh, but we will tone it down a bit. So I'll get all the rest of this uh, finished, and then we'll see what it looks like. So I've just put a third coat on this quickly and before it dries, uh, I just wanna put some marks in it. So what I've got here is a few things. So I've got the, one of the tracks from the Armafast kit. I've got a bit of sponge here uh, and a few other bits and pieces. And basically what I wanna do is just go over it, especially on the road and just A, get rid of the brush marks and B, just put a bit of texture on it just so that it doesn't look quite so brushed on basically. So I'll just go over, it's mainly the road I'm worried about. The rest of it doesn't really matter so much because that's going to have a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll do a bit of it, but it's going to have other things on it that will cover it up. But um, yeah, it's mainly the road just to get rid of the brush marks and give it a little bit of texture. Uh, oh, that doesn't look too bad. So the other thing I'm going to use is, this is one of the tracks, as I say, from the, um, the Armour Fast kit. And I'm just going to basically just push it in here and there and just leave some um, track marks. So that's the trouble is I've got to wipe it off in between because look at that toilet paper. <laughs> it's not going to get used for anything else. I can tell that right now. Uh. So you, you'll barely notice this at this scale anyway, but it's just to, you know, give it a bit of, um, again, some just some extra texture so it doesn't look quite so pristine. Oh, that's just ripped the stuff right off. Never mind. We'll fill that in afterwards in the road. And there's another thing I'm going to do as well. This is a, a, a fun little trick, actually. Let me just... Just fill in that great big hole. <laughs> uh, so this is a cotton bud, it's a used one. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take knife, cut the end off, just cut it off square. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little nick in it. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Um, but I've just put a little nick in it. And the, what that does now is it creates basically a horseshoe. And then what we can do is just come in and just, just dob it on all over like this. And this is gonna take a while, so I'll do most of this off camera. 
but it's basically, I don't know how well you can see that, but it basically creates like horseshoes, horse prints. So we'll just go over the whole thing. And this thing is, it's great. It's, it's basically almost like the ideal 170 second scale horse hoof. So uh, let me um, do all the rest of this and then uh, we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, uh, everything's dry now, that's fine. Uh, what I wanna do now is make a huge mess. Uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and apply some static grass uh, at strategic points, basically on the raised bits. Uh, so I have a static grass applicator. This is one that I made myself. Uh, I did a video on this. I will um, I will link to it if you uh, want to see how it's done. Uh, this is the big one. This is the uh, trying to think what size the generator is on this. I think it's like ten kilovolts or something. It's it's a lot anyway. Uh, you got to be careful with these things because the thing is with it, there's not enough. It's all about volts and amps. It's it's not the volts that get you. It's the amps. And the amperage on this is ridiculously low as to be almost non-existent. But it is about 10,000. I can't remember if this is 10. This is either 10 or 20,000 volt. Um, it's a huge voltage, but there's no amps. But it will give you a hell of a belt if you, if you touch the wrong end of it. So you've got to be careful with it. Treat it with some respect. Uh, right, let's plug this in. I don't I can't even remember if this. Right, so it does work. <laughs> Wasn't sure about that. Right, let's put that to one side for a minute. We'll get back to that in a minute. Because what we need to do is we need, oh, I've put grass all over it already. Um, we need to uh, get some glue on this. So I've got a little tub of Mod Podge here. Mainly, you could use just PVA glue or anything for this. It doesn't really matter. It's just this is what I happen to have uh, to hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some on here. like that and then I'm going to take a brush which I've kind of cleaned but not really and I'm gonna just spread that out a little bit you gotta be fairly quick with this because this Mod Podge actually dries very fast um, but it's like I said it doesn't matter if we don't get complete coverage we can always add some more or, or you know take some off or whatever it's fine Right, that should do us. Now for the fun bit. Try and do this without electrocuting myself, which I'm sure you would all find hilarious, but I would not. Actually, it looks relatively good. Uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna switch to the other camera here and give you a bit of a closer look. Um, excuse the jerky handheld nature of this, but my hands are not as steady as they once were. But hopefully you can see how well that's come out that's all right so that's looking fine so what we'll do now is we'll just take one of these coffee stirrers and what you can do with static grass is just kind of just kind of move it around a little bit and what it does is because at the moment all of it is standing up and it's all very uniform and you know a bit bit too uniform 
So what you do is just go over it like this and just give it a little bit of a scooch around and it um, it just like you know makes it a bit more natural and a bit less uniform so there we go that doesn't look too bad so what I shall do is I'll do the other bits um, and then we'll go on from there right so that's our static grass applied I've just been brushing off some of the excess I'll get the most the rest of it off later on um, but uh, what I've also done is I've added one other thing and if you've never tried this stuff seriously it will change your life I've got it here in this pot because I bought a great big bag of it and it's too much to have in um, you know in one go sort of thing but uh, <laughs> the label is buried under all here uh, but this is um, Woodland Scenics uh, fine turf burnt grass uh, flock and honestly this stuff is a miracle um, I you know I'd like to give credit where it's due but honestly this stuff is one of the few times where I will wax lyrical about how good something is because if you sprinkle this if you do any kind of terrain building this will change your life seriously um, like on there, we had three different colours of static grass. I sprinkled this over the top and it's blended it all together. And uh, and it all looks just like one unified thing. I mean, I'm going to be putting other stuff on this anyway, but that's not the point. I could quite happily just leave this like this and it would look fine. Um, honestly, that stuff is... I can't remember who it was who turned me on to that. It was someone on YouTube. Um, but yeah, try it. It's brilliant. But anyway, that's enough of that. Um... So what I need to do is let this dry, clean up the mess. <laughs> uh, fun. The great thing about static grass, it just goes everywhere. It's like, it's like the glitter of terrain making. Um, and then we want to start putting some paint and things on this. Uh, because what I want to do is kind of tone everything down a little bit. Because as you can see, this is quite bright. Um, and although it all matches the tanks and everything, it's it's when it's at this scale, it looks very bright. So I want to kind of tone it down a little bit. So um, what we're going to do next is we'll put some paint on. We'll mist some paint over the grass just to dull it down a bit. Because um, technically it should all be this sort of colour, this, this dead grass, because most of it was dead. Uh, I also want to... Um, I'm not going to go mad making a forest or anything, which... Technically, it should because they were in a forest in the film, but you know, um, it would look weird in a display case because the trees would have to be really stunted. Either that, or I just have trunks, and if I just had the trunks sticking up, it would look. I just think that would look weird. So we're going to make a few bushes and bits and pieces. Um, uh, but first, I want to let this dry, get some paint on it, um, and try, just try and tone it all down a little bit. So once this is dry, we'll move on. Right, so this has all had a chance to dry now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, darkening this down a little bit. And to start with, I'm going to go over the grassy areas uh, with this uh, XF10 flat brown, just to kind of tone it down a bit. see so because this is kind of awkward to go I'll do the rest of this off camera and then we'll come back and see what it looks like and then we'll put some other colors on after that right so here's the uh, the whole thing with the brown on it and now I know that does look a bit <laughs> it's actually made it look worse but there is method in my madness because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over it with the oldest bottle in the world of uh, XF 59 desert yellow um, and just as an aside actually this is what the Tamiya bottles used to look like years ago. These are, the, these are the ones you get now. And these were the same price as these. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're gonna go over the whole thing with this. So obviously we don't need to cover this completely. Um, it's more about just blending all the different colors together just to um, unify everything. And you'll also see how it's really knocking down that, the kind of oranginess of the, of the yellow ochre. So yeah, uh, also making the grass look a bit more dead, basically. Uh, so I'll go over the rest of this and then we'll see what it looks like. Right, well, as you can see, that looks a lot better. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some pigments to this uh, and I'm going to start with the same uh, yellow-ish dust that we put on the uh, the tanks because obviously that makes sense to do that. Uh, I need a slightly bigger brush to do this. Use this one. And what I'm going to do is again I'm going to go around the edges a little bit and just put it on fairly hefty but again we're going to take a lot of it off afterwards it's just to kind of make the road look a bit more dusty and again that might look a bit horrendous but uh, if I just show you quickly let's just take this off for a second once you blow it down a bit it actually gets a lot less lurid shall we say the camera also makes it look a lot worse than it actually is so i'll go around the edge all of the edges and a few other bits with this and then i've got some few, a few other colors i'm going to use so i've got this um this is mig this is rubble dust but it's kind of a grayer tone so once i've done the yellow i'm going to go over the top of it in fact i'll just show you now and then i can do the whole thing in one go um so we'll get a bit of this and we'll just go over And it's kind of make the edges of the road look dustier. So, because obviously as vehicles and that go past, especially this, because it's supposed to be in the summer, the road surface will basically just turn to dust and the dust will build up on the sides of the road. So we can also put some, see in the middle like this, you see. So, and like I say, I know it looks a bit horrendous at the moment, but once it's blended and toned down, it will actually look a lot better, <laughs> trust me. Um, so let me get it all on and then I'll show you how we kind of blend it all in. Right, now I've got that on there, I'm just going over it with a slightly bigger brush and just kind of working it in a bit more. And it is kind of funny because the camera makes it really look vivid. It's actually not nearly as, as bright as the camera is picking it up. So, although I suppose they say the camera never lies, but still. Right, there you go. So uh, I'll keep at this for a minute and then clean up all the excess and uh, we will carry on from there. Right, so this may look a bit lurid, but <laughs> honestly, under it, the camera makes it is much brighter for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to put some a few extra bits on. So I've got this mixed herbs. You've seen me use these before. This is a great way of um, just adding some like leaf litter to your dioramas. So just take some and just sprinkle it over the grass. And it, uh, it really does look the part. I'll just push that in a little bit. Just get it down into the grass a bit. Right, we might say just push it in a bit. Just work it into the grass a bit so it's not just sitting on the top because that looks weird. Like that. It also has the added benefit of making your diorama smell nice. And what I'm going to do once I've done this is uh, I'm going to seal everything with some scenery glue 
uh, which I'll do off camera. You've, you've seen me make this stuff before. If you don't know how to make it, you can buy it, but you can make your own really easily. Um, I've got a video on how to do it. I'll put a link in the thing or up there, wherever it is. Um, so you can make your own. But I'll basically just spritz the whole thing over with that and then we'll let that dry. And then I think we can start thinking about putting the tanks on. Right, so everything's dry now. Um, or dry as it needs to be. And so I think we're ready to put the tanks on. Now the first one, and the most important one, this is where the fun's really going to start, is uh, we need to get the, um, the one that needs the batteries. So I need to drill a hole in the base for the wires to go through. So let's get that one in. Excuse me reaching across the camera like that. Uh, now we're going to put this one kind of around here somewhere. Make sure there's enough room. We might need to move this this way a bit. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. Uh, okay, so... Not there. As you can see, this is a very scientific method. <laughs> now I'm going to bang a hole through the uh, the base here. This is where the fun's really going to start because I need to make that hole bigger. So we switch from this bit to this bit. Okay, now this is going to get messy. Side here and open this hole up a little bit. That should. God, I just realised there's all this grass stuck to the bottom. <laughs> right. Let's just clean up the edges of that hole a little bit. I was just about to pull those bits off, and I thought it'd be just my luck to pull that, and it goes and rip a great lump out of it. So I'll just do it properly and actually cut them off like that. Now, is that hole big enough for that wire to go through? That is the question. Yes, it is. I actually did that just about perfect. Right, so now we've got that hole, uh, we need to put the electrics in the base uh, and then we can put the base on, put this base onto the other base, you know what I mean, um, and then we can fix all the, the tanks and everything down. Right, let's do that. Right, uh, so let's get all this connected together. Um, you've seen me use all this stuff before, so none of it's particularly different or difficult. Uh, right, so. Oh, that's handy, that one's already cut. So this goes to the positive side of the battery charger. <laughs> you talk to inanimate objects as well, or is it just me? <laughs> we all do it. Right. That has got that. I thought that had popped out again there. Uh, wire cutters. 
All right, let's just snip the end off of this. And pop that into the negative side. All right, let's just flip that over, do the other side as well. Bit of belt and braces, but you know, doesn't hurt. Right, I need to lengthen this red wire slightly first. All of this will become apparent in a minute when I put it all together. That goes like that, and I try not to burn my fingers on it. use a hot air gun for this really but this will do for now to be fair it doesn't really need shrink wrap on most of these joints but I like to put it on just you know it looks neater and also it's just a bit belt and braces all right so we'll pop that through there like that And solder that. Like that. This one needs to go on the other side. I was watching a guy on, uh, I can't remember what it was I was watching now the other day, some guy was, and he'd soldered, he was soldering something like this, and he'd never soldered before in his life, or so he claimed. And um, he'd learnt how to solder just from watching YouTube videos. <laughs> which I thought was uh, quite fun. It pretty much sums up how useful YouTube can be. All right, pop that over there, pop that over there. Right, uh, so the most important thing is we need to feed all this through here and then pop that switch in. Ow. Right. Because I didn't want to solder all this together because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get it on the, anyway, you see what I mean. Um, so now we need to solder this onto the negative output. What did I do with that solder? <laughs> Put the solder down, I couldn't find it. Anyway, um, yes, so we'll solder that on there like that. And now this needs Trimming. Like that. Right, now we need to... Oh, I melted it to the... <laughs> melted it to the bottom. Never mind. Uh, that goes there, but what we need to do is get a, a sticky pad 
to hold that and I think we'll get one for the battery as well. These are just sticky pads from the pound shop. And they're very useful for this kind of thing. They're not the greatest sticky pads in the world, but when you just want something just held like this, they work very well. there like that because say so there's a plastic bit at the back here that stops it from moving back the the sticky pad is just really just to hold it in place and like so we'll put one on the the battery here and we'll stick that down onto the bottom of the case like that and that will stop that from rattling around uh now we can put the the top on and get this finished off i think Right, so you just saw me drilling some holes in the base and you're probably thinking, what madness is this? Well, let me um, <laughs> share the method to my madness. I wanted to add some trees. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I want the trees to all be the same height because uh, I want them to be the same height as the case, basically. Because uh, obviously, if we weren't putting a case lid on this, we could make the trees any height we want, but we can't so what i did was i set the depth stop on the drill that's why i did it on the drill press um so that all the holes are the same depth and they basically go down to this level here so the level of the top of the base uh, now obviously they're not flat bottom holes so they won't be exactly right but basically how the it's going to work hopefully is this the inside of the case lid is 135 millimeters high. This lip here that it sits on is five millimeters. So that gives us 130 millimeters. I have drilled down to the top of this, uh, but again, it's not perfect. There's a lot of flex in this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all of the trees 125 millimeters long. So that when they all go in, they should all come out at the same height. Because it doesn't matter how high the terrain is, the holes are all the same depth. That's the plan. So I'm gonna test it first and see if it works. Make sure my measurements are right. So I've got some bits of tree here. Oh, he says, as they're all gonna fall on the floor now. So these are the bits I'm gonna use. Uh, Cause in the film, they're all like birch and pine. And I think these will look quite suitable. So the, this is the thinner one for the smaller holes and this is a thicker one for the bigger holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that one to one side for a second. And I'm going to cut a piece off of this 125 millimeters long and hope that it fits. <laughs> so let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to try and cut them with this hacksaw. Uh, right, let's just cut this bit off the bottom. Oh. Do you know what? I've got a better idea. Wait one second. Dovetailing saw. Much better idea. So here we go again. Let's just... Oh. So what I don't want to do is break this. Oh. Right. 
right. Now, 125 mil. Ah. Let's see how well this works. Cut that there. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be easier said than done because I don't really want to. I need to cut that as well. I might just cut that with a. I haven't got a pair of clippers near me. Uh, let me get a pair of clippers. Hang on. Right. So let's cut that like that. Right, now we can cut this. Oh, this is not the easiest thing in the world to hold. Because the thing is, it's I don't want to break it, is the problem. Like that. Right, so we'll keep these little bits because we might put those on as a bit of scatter. Put that to one side. Now I'm just going to clean the bottom with the... Uh, Top as well, actually. Right now, let's bring this back in. Uh, let's see if this will fit in these holes. Uh, which hole? I think this one will do to start with. Ah. Oh. Okay, right, that's got that in. Now, let's get the case lid back in. Right, now, is that going to fit? Oh. I think that might be touching the top of the case. Yes, it is. So it needs to be a little bit shorter than that. So let's take another five mil off of that. Right, try again. Test fit number two. Lid. Oh. Hmm. Doesn't help that this lid is a bit not the best fitting. Uh, you see it's kind of bowed on the sides <laughs> so it doesn't go over the thing very well. That's it, right, that now fits. And that's a couple of millimeters away from the top, so that's perfect. Right, so this is all moved, which is not helping. But we'll worry about that in a minute. That's better. Right, so that works. So what I will do now is I'll cut all of the rest of the trees and put them on and then we'll blend them into the terrain a bit. Right, so I've added all the trees I want to add and you can see it looks pretty good. Um, sorry again for the handheld, it's just, that's just, you know, how it goes. Uh, I've got a couple of holes to fill in because I decided if I'd put all the trees in I was originally going to do it, it would look a bit busy. Um, 
so that all looks fine now before I glue these in permanently uh, I also need to hide the bottom of them and I'll show you a little trick to do that uh, I'm going to use the same herb mix I used before but I'm going to um, basically uh, make it a bit finer so wait there a second right so what we've got here is a food processor just a cheap one uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this herbs and throw them in here. I don't know whether this is going to work. Normally I'd use a mortar and pestle for this, but I don't know where mine has gone. I'll put a bit more in, doesn't it? Um, I, think I might do as well, just for the lols. I'll throw a few bits of this dead wood in as well. Just to give it a bit of something uh, a good trick you can do actually if you get one of these is uh, in the autumn or you know winter or whatever if you get um, some uh, leaves you know that are falling from the trees let them uh, put them in the airing cupboard or something uh, you know for as long as you can or you can you can dry them out in the oven if you want to um, but basically get them completely dry so they go all crumbly, throw them in one of these, leaf litter, like literal leaf litter. <laughs> so it's like it's just an, in an interesting way to get all this kind of stuff without actually having to go and buy it. Unfortunately, I don't have any. I made a load before and I've used it all up and I haven't had a chance to replenish my supply yet. Right, let's see how this works. So this is Russell Hobbs, as you can see, not a sponsor. It was just basically the cheapest one I could find. Um, but you basically just pop the lid on like that and um, uh, you blend it. Let's see if I can get a shot of it blending. Hang on a second. Right, let's see how all this works. Apologies for the noise. So to work it, you just press the red button on the top. Right, let's see what that looks like. Oh, Ooh, dusty. Didn't do much of those twigs, did it? <laughs> oh, it smells nice. I was hoping those twigs would kind of agitate it a bit. Right, I think we'll give that another go. Right, let's see what that's like. Yeah, I think that'll probably work. There we go, you see. What I'll do is I'll um I'll put this through a sieve and uh do it that way and filter out the small you know the bigger bits and then um just sort of mix it as I need to. So let me get that sieved out and then we'll go on from there. Right, so now we've done that, uh, I'm gonna start fitting these trees in properly. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll just pop this one out. To be honest, they probably stay in there on their own as it goes, but what we do is we take a little bit of Mod Podge and we put a little blob on the end. Like that. And then pop that back in. Like that. I'm not going to do all of these. I'll just do this one and then I'll do the rest of them off camera. But it's just to give you an idea of what I'm doing. Then we take some of our mashed up herbs. And what you do is just put some around the bottom there and it just hides. Just makes it look a little bit more, you know, realistic. Like that. And we'll also just, when well, we've got these, uh, 
these holes that we're not going to use, we'll just put some in there as well. And then basically we'll take a little bit of the really powdered stuff, which I've put in this little pot, and we'll just put a little bit of that on as well. Just to add a bit of extra, what's it, like that. And then we take some scenery glue, and I really need to make some more of this because I've nearly run out. Mainly because my daughter keeps using it as well. But, you know, can't really complain, can I? And uh, we just put some on like that. And that will hold it all in place. Put some on here as well where we've filled in our hole. Stop laughing at the back. There you go. So I'll get on and do the rest of these. And uh, I think then we can uh, finally wrap this up. And here is our finished article. Uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with how this came out. As I mentioned, dioramas are not my strong point. Uh, but this actually looks pretty good. Um, I mean, obviously, if anyone's got any, any suggestions for improvements, then by all means, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with how this has come out. Uh, so we have our, our recreation of our movie scene, which has worked out quite well. Uh, the three tanks look pretty good. I'm particularly pleased with the uh, the burning T-34. I think that looks very effective. Uh, yeah, so on the whole, very happy. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little series of videos. As ever, I'd like to take a moment and thank my top tier patrons, Amy and the Anonymous Tosh, for their continued support. And uh, a special thanks for those of you who have signed up for channel memberships. Um, if you want to help support the channel, then feel free to uh, hit the join button below, or you can come and join us on Patreon if you like. And uh, if not, you're always welcome to come and join us in the staff canteen on Facebook. So, yeah, hopefully you've all enjoyed this little series of videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.